Celebrity Big Brother Breakdown time. Hello. Wow, that was <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Do you kind of wish that you were in the bathroom doing, um, you know, uh, Fern's like podcast thing that we're going to see tonight? There was a bit of a teaser on Late and Live. And oh, she's her just, chat show. She's doing a chat show, but she's literally just sat in the bathroom. I would like that. You're, it, you are quite chat show vibe today. I'm just your like um, civilian off of the street that you've dragged in. <laughs> the Vox Pop type. Yeah. Where well, they're out for their shopping and they just get cornered by this journalist who's like, yeah. please answer my questions. You're begging them. Oh my God, I used to hate doing that because no one wanted to do it. No one wanted to be on camera. Oh my God, yeah, Vox Pop to the worst. But I was thinking this the other day, actually, funnily enough. Um, that people nowadays are probably so much more used to being accosted by random people and ask their opinion because like TikTokers and TikTokers, yeah. jazz asking yeah. like I mean obviously this doesn't happen to me with my granny jumpers but like oh I like your <laughs> outfit where's it from <laughs> who are you wearing because I'd be like Sue Ryder <laughs> <laughs> You know. I'd be worried about doing those ones that they do on like <laughs> 10 years younger. You know, when they like have to guess your age. Yeah. That would frighten me to death. Anyway, well, we're off on a tangent. 22? <laughs> That's so weird. It's spot on. <laughs> okay, so we didn't see the surprise eviction last night, but we know it happened. AJ on Late and Live told us that everything had gone under lock and key. Mm-hmm. That, did you even see that gallery had been taped up? Everything was yeah. very strict. So they're in yeah. hiding now. Even the uh, the live feed last night was cut off dramatically. Yeah. So we can't work out who it is that's left. Yeah. Well, do you know what? Juicy, exclusive for you. Um, so you might have seen this earlier today because we did share it on our website as it happened. Um, but fab one here from our TV reporter, Alex Doyle, um, who basically has learned from one of our audience spies who was in the audience for Late and Live last night that basically there was chaos behind the scenes of the eviction because basically... Someone in the crew started removing that blackout from the gallery before all the audience had left the studio. So basically, some people in the audience did find out who had left. No. So then basically bosses behind the scenes had to scramble to get in there with some NDAs to tie everyone down to be like, you cannot reveal who has left because they are desperate to keep under wraps. I mean, by the time our podcast goes live, it might have leaked because essentially people in that room... (laughs) knew who left that because crew that crew guy he's getting sacked how do you know it's a man she she's getting sacked <laughs> i was just blamed because a guy would do that maybe Ooh. being sexist um but I, I, oh my goodness i know that is so really bad like great story from alex there but it just really goes good. to show that like live telly these things happen mm. um so god i mean as i say we we, we may already know who's left that's but interesting though because of the nda like yeah you can sign that but also they would probably end up telling their friends and they're not going to publish... Okay, yeah. they won't, it'll stop them publishing it on Twitter and it, it's spreading like that. Yeah. But really, realistically, it's going to be out there, yeah. isn't it? And also, they might have texted their friends before they signed the NDA. Like, nowadays... Oh, no, but... I'd have done that. I'd have sent you a message straight away. I'd have been like, flick, you'll never guess what? Quick flip reverse on what I just said. You do have to hand your phone in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's these really yeah, groovy course. little kind of zip-up pouches that they make you put your phone in um so they wouldn't have been able to text their friends unless they had a secret hidden device yeah Um, i mean that's commitment we have to hire them if so to come onto the podcast and tell us all about it but do you know i just think it's like it's all fun and games and it's a tv program but like when they're trying to keep something secret i think we talked about this yesterday like how nowadays it's actually very difficult to keep things quiet mm. um but like they're really really trying to keep this one locked down and it could be like a real tv moment tonight if it's a shocking name that has gone if it's a colson Oh, he would be devastated if it was backdoor eviction. Yeah, they? because actually last night on Late, Late and Live, I think that um, Marisha said uh, she would hate it if it was him because he's got such a big family and he'd want them all to be oh, there. Oh, that's sweet. I know. Yeah, all this Coronation Street. I know. Co-stars would want yeah. to be there. But, but it, it's it, exciting. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's interesting that this is like a big deal, the fact that we don't know something. Mm-hmm. Because I think with our job, sometimes we do actually moan about it because... You're, it's hard when you're watching something and then we're, we're writing about it 
you're always going to find out something before. And it's actually lovely yeah. when you're just sat at home on the sofa and you just react at yeah. that moment. Whereas we normally hear something about it beforehand. And this is like day and age now where, because we're all watching things at different times or whether it's on Netflix or Prime Video, whatever it is, it's then you're kind of, I guess, you're... You're always there's always someone out there who knows. There, there's a risk of being yeah. it being spoiled at all times, whether it's on Twitter or or, yeah. or going on the sun or something. Um, back in the day, we just didn't know anything, no. and it is weird now that we're. You know, I th- always think this is a really we're shocked by it. Yeah, like a really juicy barometer of how a show is doing in terms of kind of zeitgeisty, um, you know, like really getting into into the sort of um, con- public sort of mindset is when we go into the newspaper conference meeting each morning there are some shows which you cannot write down on (laughs) our list of stories a result Mm -hmm. because other people in that room that don't do tv as their job will go you've just spoiled this (laughs) i was looking forward to watching it tonight and there's only really two shows that that's still the case for Mm-hmm. which is The Traitors. Mm-hmm. So I was on a strict no spoiler lockdown, do not talk about this, do not ruin it. And The Apprentice, which I think's potentially a bit more surprising, but that still gets like a good 5 million viewers. So it will be interesting to see if they feel that way about tonight's surprise eviction um, when that meeting happens later today. Mm. The thing is though about the, the spoilers, um, that you're always grappling because you do want to know stuff. Also, you do want to be surprised. But I, what I like in Late in Live is just like the, the clips that they give you, which is giving more of an insight into the people and the, the funny moments. And we're getting that from the live mm. feed as well. Mm. Um, I always think that with Love Island, we get that on the Saturday night show. Uh, yeah. Where you actually see a bit more of their fun personality as mm. opposed to... The narrative the producers are attaching yeah, to that and person. And just like, yeah potentially maybe uh, it could um, be said allegedly be, allegedly <laughs> it's claimed to be um yeah no i think it's more about um their their actual you know the funny moments like them scaring each other or something like that that i just find really funny to yeah watch. i completely agree um and i love on late and live but yeah getting we just see a lot more of louis being louis and because i kind of want to watch 24 7 louis it just is right <laughs> up my street wow 24 7 louis i would love it Jeez. like when he was trying to make the face but because of his alleged botox <laughs> he couldn't <laughs> Yeah, that was really funny. Um, Do you know who, um, very random tangent, but fun, um, who you can watch 24-7 of? Who? Graham Norton. Graham Norton has a channel that you can go on to just watch the Graham Norton show 24-7. Because what? he's been doing it for so long. There are so many interviews. You can just go on and at any given point there's a Graham Norton interview on. <laughs> That's funny. I know. I thought you meant it was going to be in his house or something. I was like, that's no. brave, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. No, I know, but isn't that just like, yeah, Goodness. fun fact for you all? You can share that at the pub later and everyone will be like, dull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what other juicy gossip have you got for us? Who have you been talking to this week? Oh, yeah. So, um, I was chatting with um, Yinka Bikini this week, who. What a um, name brilliant love her and um, so radio dj um by trade but obviously comes on in these programs she's a real social commentator as well as sort of you know culture and she has been on late and live a lot this series um and uh we were we were laughing about how we both really like sitting on the fence <laughs> because mm-hmm. she says that um when you're on late and live what's different about being on there versus being um, on some of these other shows where you're like a talking head is that you've got the family and friends there and the audience are also very vocal. And she says that that like all the panellists are hyper aware that they could be, they have to like really own what they say and say Mm. it with their chest because and be able to back up what they're saying Mm. because A, the B&B, the Big Brother audience is like, super locked in yeah. and passionate but be yeah. the family we are. And friends we really are we are um and she said sometimes when she tries to be really balanced they're like no tell us what you really think mm-hmm. which i think is very interesting in light of all of this narrative that's still rumbling on about the ek and sue kind of treatment so she got mentioned a lot on late on live last night she is the i mean 
for someone who has left the show and very much not engaging with the show anymore. They're still... She's even changed her profile picture on Instagram and social media from her BB profile back to a normal picture. So officially done with that. Mm. Um, but I just thought it was really interesting from Yinka that she she said it is quite challenging to sometimes... that They, they do kind of want you to have a position and maybe that's how, um, for example, Leighton was... Leighton Williams was someone who was sort of held up as pushing it maybe a bit too far about Ekin, but it sounds like they yeah. feel like in that arena they should have a but strong that's, stance. That's like anything with um, TV shows where you've got, if it's politics, you've got to have someone maybe more right-wing, someone more left-wing, someone yeah. more neutral. So it's about getting... Every, because then someone in the audience is going to agree with one of the panel yeah. instead of just hating everything that exactly, they're all saying. Exactly, exactly. Um, but I thought that was super interesting. Um the other thing that I was going to share with you is um, obviously since yesterday's podcast we've got the official figure for the number of people who officially complained about ITV's um, kind of handling of Ekansu and it was 139 which put into the context of the real big hitters complaints wise so always held up is um, Love Island back in the day of sort of Faye Winter's explosive arguments of the gaslighting rows of Luca and, and, and that sort of thing. And that was up in its thousands. So yeah. realistically put into context, it felt like on social media, people were very angry about this, but only 139 actually went to the trouble yeah. of complaining. So I did, I did say that, I think when we were chatting about it, that it felt like a bit of a storm in a teacup yeah. type situation where yes, there is, backlash on social media but two days before there were backlash about Ek and Sue so mm. they sort of just go where the drama is yeah they just um, love the and they get you know <laughs> yeah and they get they get so into it and they're on sides because I mean that's what basically X Twitter is really it's very yeah. mob mentality Tribe-y. so when ev- when everyone was saying oh actually that's that was a bit harsh of AJ and Will it then suddenly turned from Ekin onto them mm. but Look, I love that interview and I will defend Adrian Will because I think they're the best host. Mm-hmm. They've been so brilliant this series. And that the the way that they um I think they're always gonna come across as like having a slight kind of opinion. I think you just automatically do. It's very hard if they're not an actress or an mm. actor to conceal their feelings completely, don't you think? Mm. You know, there's always gonna be like I can see what you're actually thinking about me right now. I can see it with your eyes. You're like, shut up. <laughs> I was actually just wondering if you had that really good lipstick on again that you had on the other day. It's, it's, um, <laughs> this is that, that, that's that one that you gave me. It is, it is. I love it. I love no, it I was so listening much. to everything you were saying because you always made such good and valid points. <laughs> uh, speaking of valid points, one more thing to say on Ekin. Um, as we've said with these situations, because we're not hearing from Ekin, people are filling the silence. Mm-hmm. And one of those is Marisha, who, you know, arguably has, you know, skin in that game. She was a big part of, you know, that conversation which, arguably was Ekin's kind of downfall, the yeah. um, the nomination. And Marisha's point has been very much like, it. everyone felt like that wasn't Ekin reacting to being nominated by Marisha, it was a trauma response. And in that moment, it was just m- way bigger for Ekin of all those things. And it just mm. comes back, I think, to what we'd said, where it's, you know, she wasn't upset about that, she was upset about all the other things in yeah. her life. And maybe it was a bit soon for her to go in. Yeah. Off the oh, back of- Oh yeah, I think it, it definitely was, if yeah. that's how she was feeling. And um, her reaction, it, it kind of, it, it tied into her saying about being misunderstood because I think we then all jumped to the conclusion, oh, she's playing a game, she's acting, like she's, you know, hamming mm. this crying up when actually it was her genuine trauma response. So yeah. it's just trying to, like, it just shows you that you can't judge a book, can you? You've got to sort of really get to know them. And we didn't, I don't think we actually got to know the, the real Ekin during that no. time. No, no. Maybe not, not enough time to get to know someone. It's been yeah. very quick. But you know, like I say, we're still talking about her. You and me yeah. will be sat here in our 50s still yeah. talking about Ekin Sue. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'd be happy with that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll be we'll have been replaced by AI by then. Oh, I know. But look, can they pull off this lipstick, though? <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Can well, AI do that? that? Let's hope they Probably, s- yeah. sex me up dramatically. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about something sexy. Mm-hmm. You are a lady in the know about these sorts of things. Yes. Fresh from Cheltenham. Yeah. Queen oh. of betting. Yeah. 
I Give actually us... was very good. I, I know you were. Well, three winners. Thank you very much on the, on the last day. Um, so, so give us the official rundown. Yeah, you well... look official today in your blazer. <laughs> Come on. Go. Um, so our friends... Runners at, and riders. Yeah, runners and riders. Our friends at Betfair and at Labrooks, they've been giving us some odds on, uh, you know, who, who they think is in the running to, to win the show. Mm-hmm. And and the overwhelming majority is that Louis Walsh is odds on mm-hmm. to win. Mm-hmm. Followed by personal favourite. Potsy. Potsy. Yeah. yeah. So that to me is just, that's what we were saying really yesterday. It's the yeah. two. Um but Nikita's name keeps popping up, but he's down to seven to one. So, I mean, actually, that's quite good odds. If you put a pound on, you'll get seven pounds back. Maths. <laughs> um, <laughs> Carol Vorderman quaking. Um, okay, right. Who else? Um, do you know what? This is surprising, actually. Bradley is the outsider, 40 to one. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, Even I kind of get so it. Even though he's so lovely and everyone kind of yeah. really rates him and everyone keeps coming out and saying how much they like him and stuff, but yeah. actually he's not as popular with fans at wow. home. Um, wh- and wh- Vern wh- where's Burton's the like, fan base? Young, um, young well, he's got a huge, huge following with Heartstopper, Netflix. But are they the kind of people that vote? I think so, yeah. It's a free vote. You get free five, five free votes online. Yeah. Well, we'll so, see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. Um, Fern Britain, 20 to 1. Ooh. Um, which we've... I mean... Can we just talk about her smugness? I need to talk about it. Well, she said, she's, as we said yesterday, as she described herself as unbearably smug. Mm. Mm. And she was. She was good she at that. Was. Yeah. She was good at that. But her odds have kind of drifted out because she was one of the favourites at one point. Yeah. Um, and then she's just, everything that's happened with Nikita has gone out. And we saw more drama between her and Nikita last night. Didn't we? Can we just watch the moment again, please? Oh, please. I love. So this was in, in the middle of the balloon game and Nikita just really flung himself into it, didn't he? <laughs> and they all had to pop each other's balloons and Nikita just completely took Fern out and she whacked her head on this sofa. Shall we have a little look? Oh, oh, oh. No. You okay? Yes. Yeah. Hell. Okay. You're right. Yes, my brains are shaking, but apart no, from no, that. Stop. My favourite thing wow. about this <clears throat> was Fern was like, oh my God, I can just go and have a little rest. Mm-hmm. Now, she may have hurt herself, and I'm sure it probably did hurt, but also, if this was me, I'd be like, oh, brilliant, I could just go and have a little sit down. <laughs> they might give me a biscuit. <laughs> Get away from Louis for a little while. Yeah, brilliant, just go for a little rest. I don't have to play this stupid game. <laughs> uh, my favourite bit was... Uh, Nikita going back in to like throw himself at the object to see like how hard it was. So he was like, and he was like really, it was bashing. It's a sofa bit, but it's kind of like the top end. Yeah. But it looked all cushiony because he was pressing it right down. Yeah. And he was like, no, no, it wouldn't hurt. No, it's going to be okay. And like, and, like really like giving him himself a pot, like a, a bit of a pep talk, wasn't it, he? It reminded me of, you know, Jurassic Park. Um, <laughs> Niche I love what? Jurassic Park. Um, the di- the little mini dinosaurs that have the big hammerheads. OG, OG Jurassic Park. The sort of hammerheads that just ram everything to death. Yeah. <laughs> In that moment, Nikita <laughs> was Nikita. like ramming his head into the sofa. That's funny. Yeah, a little insight into my mind there. I mean, again, it just <laughs> felt like not not. To, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it, it was genuine from Fern and that she. I think anything like that. If you're not used to play fighting in that way and it's just it's caught her off guard and she's just got a bit of a fright um sounds like you're used to play fighting in that way <laughs> sometimes plans sometimes. For Saturday. <laughs> sometimes but i think that it was more the sh- the shock of it that it wasn't actually like whether it actually hurt it was more just like she, she got a bit of a fright i think she just wanted a little sit down and a biscuit but but it was but, right okay this is my cynical side and i'm not you know i don't know that this is true at all but it was just feeding into this whole narrative about Nikita again. And it was just like, what is your a beef? Uh, you what think is she, your a beef? She saw an opportunity to go and pick up another little pack of beef. Oh, it's just so frustrating. Like, out of everyone, why, Nikita, are we, you we did not see zoning coming. in on this? Because it made him feel terrible and he really takes everything to heart. I mean, that um, the, the conversation that he had with Levi where he was like, really worried about if he defended mm-hmm. Levi about using a certain term and... 
you know, he, he takes everything. He goes into the diary room and apologise. Everything mm. he takes very seriously. He doesn't want to offend anyone. Yeah. He is, I mean, talk about sitting on the fence. My God, Nikita's bottom would be very sore. He just, that's what he does all the time. He just wants to get on with everyone. Wants to be friends with everyone. Doesn't want to upset anyone. Just yeah. wants to be happy all the time. Just wants to be dancing all the yeah. time. Nothing wrong with that. Until Fern Britain's around. And she just won't let that be. Did not see this coming. Um, Theory. Mm-hmm. Nikita has been media trained by the BBC. Mm-hmm. And I wonder whether this is just Nikita being like, oh no, this could be a problem, that could be a problem, this could be a problem. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's a air on the side of caution at all times situation. Mm-hmm. You know, like a double check she's fine, check she's fine, and you know, that squeaky clean yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah. He might just be like that as a person, obviously. When you say... um BBC media trained do you mean are you kind of suggesting that there's more of a it's quite tight there isn't it quite strict with their rules about how they speak to the press and things does that differ from other channels there's certainly I think other channels more room for personalities um so certainly whenever we chat to the strictly dancers um it's always within quite a controlled space it's always very keep this on the show um certainly even when um f- for example el street studios are haunted we always run the story yep every halloween it's fun there's always a haunting because those ghosts those pesky ghosts they well, just yeah it's been around forever they just tap into that seasonal event um uh, it's always lots of fun it's yeah. always makes a big deal of halloween and um sometimes they prefer their dancers not to talk about the strictly ghosts because they're professionals interesting um and so they need to lighten up a bit and have a bit of a sense of humor i think it's more just like the bbc is held to a higher standard isn't it just generally you know the license fee well it should be i don't think it's always like that yeah 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 exactly um so i think that probably nikita like what we're definitely getting from him is that he's incredibly professional Mm. you know he talked last night about how he didn't become a dancer he just it's all he's ever known and the only conscious decision he felt like he'd ever made in terms of his career was moving from being a pr- professional dancer to being a TV dancer. Yeah. Um, so he's just like, you can tell he's incredibly focused on that. Yeah. And, you know, I think of all the people going in there, he didn't want to go in there and in any way affect mm-hmm. the trajectory of his yeah, career. Yeah, and when you look back at, you think about the Ryan Thomas, Roxanne Pallet scenario where you just, there's a, well, this one thing that happens and, and you could see how... If that hadn't been caught on camera, Ryan's career would have been over. And yeah. it is, you know, that's that's the risk of going into that house. Yeah, I do think that it's, it's part of the reason why I haven't warmed to Nikita as much as perhaps some of the other ones. There's mm. a maybe a bit of a, a barrier there. It's, there's an uptightness that you can feel. And mm. I think that you've hit the nail on the head. It is that media trained. Mm. He's seeing that as a storyline. He's seeing Fern mm. in the diary room crying because she's hurt herself and he was the cause of it yeah. and him being in the headlines yeah that's how you can see his mind yeah. whirring as opposed to just embracing the situation as as it is i think there's undoubtedly the genuine part of him that is worried that he's hurt someone mm. full stop be it man woman young old mm. he's hurt someone mm-hmm. but i do think that yeah there's that layer of how does this look yeah i had to um text one of my best friends ellie that um she'll be she has to listen obviously shout for this. Out. so shout out um but uh, she she does not like balloons at all i would go as far to say like very very scared um of them and so i had to text her last night be like triggering you need to like skip past this part because <laughs> it's actually <laughs> it showed you that you can actually get hurt by balloons oh, so. <laughs> there was a part of me um that was like <laughs> i quite enjoy the itv of just like let's play this game which is <laughs> got like accident and injury <laughs> health and safety drama written all over it you know what i mean they're running around in slippers someone put their crocs in sports mode <laughs> generally just love that, that as a concept you know what i mean it's, but, it's got health and safety written all over it but it was, itv were like yeah let's keep going then let's keep playing yeah, this game yeah, just keep going enjoyable and and david potts like it because if it had anything to do with food, and he admits this himself, anything to do with food, like his competitive levels just go like through the roof. Yeah. And so he was just focused on this Chinese takeaway. He was. And I just, I adore him. He <laughs> makes me laugh so much every single episode. Yeah. 
Defo. He's fab. Um, so, um, when I was joined last week while you were away by my Why boss. Why did you keep bringing that up? Well, because he's Mr. Serious <laughs> by Mr. Rod McPhee. Yeah. Um, shout out. Oh, we actually had a shout out request yesterday. <gasps> shout out Riley, one of our big fans. Oh. Um, so, yes. So, Rod and I were talking about if we thought any moments from this year's series could win a BAFTA for like moment TV moment of the year and I sort of talked about how Sharon and Louis generally were brilliant um and I'm not asking you this question any moments would it be a David moment potentially I don't BAFTA nominated I don't think so (laughs) well I ask you this now because we had the so we had the BAFTA TV moment of the year last week but then um yesterday we had the full suite of full nominations come out yes Big Brother did not get nominated did not make the cut no so in the reality category um Married at First Sight love maths Mm -hmm. um channel 4's experimental prison reality tv show banged up (gasps) oh i love that did you watch it yeah so good with the tractor guy with the tractor guy but the other mp johnny mercer who i love oh shout Um, out johnny mercer of course shout out special today (laughs) um and then davina's absolutely brilliant my mum your dad oh yeah that's the so the love island for older people um, and we just thought it was quite interesting that Davina. D- <laughs> what? <laughs> I was going to say something really mean then, but I'm not going to say. Um, I just think it's really interesting that Davina's got a BAFTA for a show that she was incredibly invest- nominated for, I should say. She was incredibly invested in that. You know, mm. she was part of the pitching process and everything. Mm. And then her old show that she, you know, loses out on yeah, loses yeah, out yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Um, now I know that it was the Civilian series and they'll be really hoping that the second series of Civilian and as we revealed earlier this week um, Celebrity also coming back for a second series um, might be in the running next year um, it feels too soon for this series to have been when it's not even finished it probably wouldn't have oh, made yeah, the no, cut wouldn't right have, so yeah, yeah. So it ha- it's, so is, the rules is aired in 2023 but obviously right, so this the is civilian looking at the civilian one yeah, yeah. would have been but um, obviously they'd have lo- I'd would have loved it yeah. if, if they'd have got the nod but sadly not this time um, anything funny you want to talk about um can't remember what I was going to say actually. Louis, Louis, <laughs> when he it was, was always talking about. Louis. Sorry, it was Louis. The, it was, it was the Louis. it was the Louis bit when um he was he was talking about his giving his n- number. I don't know why that happened at the same time as at David and was it Colson who were in the shower? Yeah. I don't know why they were in the shower and he was having this conversation, but he was saying that like, I have to give you my number on Friday. And then it was David saying about, like, you know, the, he wants to voice note. And Louis was just like, no, 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 just a note. <laughs> no voice, <laughs> just, just a note. And um, and it reminded me of, you know, like, when you're on a night out and you, you make friends in the in the ladies. Yeah. So, and then next time they're kind of inviting you to their wedding. And, like, yeah. you bonded, like, five minutes into yeah. the conversation. It kind of felt like that where you know that you'll never actually hear from them. Yeah. And that's what I think it was happening with Louis and David. Like, they're just never going to be friends it will be like it will be like david 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 all blue ticked and sort of like (laughs) had been opened maybe listened to but then rapidly stopped um oh they can all catch up at the baftas next year when it gets nominated i really hope that yeah i really hope that that happens i think it should in terms of just sharon and and louis their content deserves it i feel like tv moments like a good place for it to sit because like i think we have to what we have to agree about the series is them being back on tv like tv icons Mm. of like the last few decades mm-hmm. like if you were going to list the 10 biggest stars on tv that weren't acting it it would in, it would have to include sharon definitely mm. louis probably yeah, simon and so on and just like the wealth of tales they've told yeah so i really think they deserve that next year i've actually got um a name potentially for celebrity big brother the, the second series oh. uh so in our chat with 
Carrie Katona on this podcast yesterday. <laughs> she was talking about how she would absolutely love to do Big Brother again. Yeah. And she wants to go back in. And she doesn't really care. I said, you know, you're not a bit worried if you go back in and things don't go as well. And yeah, she, she's just like, no, I'm just that it is what it is. She's just so up for going in. She <gasps> thinks that this series has been the best Celebrity Big Brother series ever interesting which i thought was a bit surprising um because yeah. um, i i kind of automatically just go to david's dead that series that was my i think that was one of the most iconic ones um but kerry kerry loved this one and she it's just made her really determined to go in next year did she do all stars ultimate whatever they called mm, it no i don't think so did mm. she she had that relationship with um the guy who's really famous from emily in Paris, Luce, Luce, Lucien Lavis. Yes, yeah, they had a little fling. Oh my gosh, together. Do you remember? Yeah, blimey. Um, Louis at least is there with some more bless. I love. Th- th- what's made me think of this is you being like yeah, that guy, Lucien. Even though he's like, you know, he's gone <laughs> on to achieve great things, but there's no doubt that we all know who Colin Farrell is. I'm good friends with, you know Colin Farrell? Yeah. I know him very well, because he auditioned for boys and stuff. It's, yeah. So that was Did you of, say Feral or Farrell? Let's call Farrell. him Colin Feral. Because <laughs> by all accounts he is. If Britney's <laughs> to be believed, <laughs> didn't they famously have quite the romp? Oh. Uh, rompalicious time together. Oh. Um, Colin Farrell wanted to audition for Boy Zone. That was just classic moment, wasn't oh it? Oh my gosh. Uh, like, I would love, I'm sure someone's done this already, just literally to collate every single name that Louis has dropped on the floor of that house <laughs> and just list them. Because, you know, in Late in Live, they're doing the kind of, um, let's call it an almanac kind of roundup of the thing that they've repetitively done. So with Ekin, it was Love Island. For Zizi, it was Faces. She'd pulled, Marisha is singing. For Louis, I really hope it's the name drops. Just oh, yeah, it is. It's just constant. It's just brilliant. It keeps on giving. You think, oh, surely he's mentioned everyone in his phone book by now. But No. no? Um, I also really like that it's all become a bit like people that Louis helped get where they are today. Mm-hmm. Um, you go yeah, in it's there. It's very much like a pat on the back. Yeah, he's doing his personal PR in yeah. there, <laughs> isn't he? Um, and last night it was that he'd um, made you two you know he'd got you two he'd stick with their manager yeah so I bet that manager's like oh god thanks for that thanks Thanks for outing me that I was about to get sacked yeah (laughs) I know can you imagine (laughs) um I just think he's been amazing he thoroughly deserves to win our boss said that you know they thought that maybe you weren't doing that great but I persuaded them to keep you back on here oh that's really nice because where would you you be without gags i know honestly <laughs> i i don't know where i would be i would not laugh as much right i'm gonna give you some value now then now you've said that okay do you want to hear about tonight's show yes well this sadly. is what i told them i said you were gonna do this <laughs> oh sadly. uh-oh you're getting sad no well look <laughs> oh not again <laughs> um so sadly because tonight's they're so desperate to keep everything locked down mm. um there's really not that much going on. Mm-hmm. However, we are going to hear from the loved ones. So they're going to get their like letters from home vibe, um, which I think will be really sweet. Um, we got a little... It's only been three weeks. No, I know. So... I'm a bit like get a grip. Yeah. Um, but as we know, it's tough in there. Uh, you're forced to sort of confront all sorts of things. Um, we got a little glimpse of this last night on Late and Live. And, oh my God, Nikita's girlfriend is just so gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous red head, so no wonder there was like no romance rumours. I know that there was a small effort at trying to make that thing with Nikita yeah. and Ekin, yeah, yeah. but no, both gorgeous gals. But um, so I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that'll be really fun. Interested to see who pops up for Louis. Maybe we're going to get Sunita again because she seems to be mm-hmm. being trotted out as Louis's kind of friend and fan vibes. Yeah. So interested to see. Imagine if they got Simon. I know, because I want to know, I want to know what Simon thinks about what Louis has been saying in there, because yeah. he does have, you know, these loose lips that are giving away, loose lips or loose, t- what's the saying? Both. Yeah. Um, General mouth region. Yeah. <laughs> but he's he's letting a lot of secrets yeah. slip, isn't he, of that 
actually, was that necessary to bring up from 30 years ago? But yeah, we yeah. want to know. No, I know. Bringing it. And often when I spoke to Sharon when I was down at the eviction and... Um... Name drop. All oh, right, Louis. Sorry. <laughs> uh, when I spoke to Sharon, um, and I asked her, was she bothered about, like, if Simon had been in touch? And she was just like, beep, a beep, no. <laughs> so I'm sure that Louis feels the same. And um, I mean, Simon is doing press right now, ahead of mm-hmm, BGT mm-hmm. coming back in April. Yeah. So... Um, God, wouldn't it be brilliant if ITV were like, right, come on, we'll support BGT if you just do a quick little vid for Louie. Mm. TV moment of the year. <gasps> yes. Easy. Do you know what? I think Simon is one of the, the nicest guys I've ever interviewed. Whenever people ask me, oh, who's your best one? I, I always say Simon because he, I remember him like remembering my name and mm. kept saying it. And I was like, Simon. He was just really friendly and um, a professional. And he asks, he ends up asking you questions. And you think, hang on a second. I'm meant to be getting stories from you. Yeah. But he's really interested in like, the, the, the public of what they think about things. So he was asking me about one of the Britain's Got Talent shows, like the show launch that we'd got a sneak preview of. Mm. And he was genuinely like, look, who did you really like on this? Yeah. You know, what's your thoughts? Who do you think will get through? Who no, do you think's going to be in the final, you know? He doesn't care what you think. He just wants you to not ask him questions. I fell for it hook, line yeah. and sinker. I think like, I can't even tell you how, yeah. how charming he was and I just fell for it. No, he just wants to waste the time so you're, you're not asking him questions. <sighs> sorry. I'm going to get sacked now. I'm so sorry to break this to you. God, we need to be better at our jobs. Right, I've, okay. um, I've been banned from Simon Cowell before. <laughs> and what? <laughs> yeah. Like early on in my career. So this was back when like X Factor was like, you know, he, huge business and every day there was some sort of scandal and things. And um, I think that the, the press team were just very sort of like, it, every day there was a new fire to fight. And I think that um, I'd, I'd asked a, a certain question about a story and it was like, you, you aren't invited to this now you're banned this series um but that back then they had that the, they had all the power and they could do that so yeah i was banned i mean i don't know if my ban has been lifted i mean i definitely have spoken to simon since then yeah he probably never fine. knew that i was banned even he yeah. probably you oh my know God, my two best friends rowing i don't like it we have a beef <laughs> a beef <laughs> okay so you haven't got any gossip about tomorrow but or tonight, no, no, sorry. Yeah, no. What about what about um people returning for the final? Do we know anything about that yet? Because it would be great to see Sharon jet back from America, but I imagine that's not gonna happen. Yeah, no, don't think we're gonna see Shaz. I also don't think we're gonna see Ekin. No. At the minute still lockdown. At the minute, I when I last was chatting about this, it was a uh, probs no. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. She might be feeling a bit better now. The sun's shining today mm. always helps. <sighs> no one's come out and said anything negative about her from the cast. No. So, you know, it's it's all very amicable from their side. It's not as if she's going to be in a toxic... No. Uh, you know, because you know, they normally sit them and they watch the, everyone come out and they're mm. all together. It's not like putting her in there would be really toxic and awful. No. She, they all get on still. Yeah, and it's like um, Trichelle said, um, Ekin's traitor's pal, like, read the house. None of them have got anything bad to say about her. Like, unt- until that whole fakery nom situation no one had nominated her really i think at that point she'd had one nomination yeah um so yeah you're right oh so anyway look here we are back talking about ekin i know we're obsessed with her we don't have a beef with her no absolutely not never 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 okay well anything else you want to add no <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about, like, am I leaving this room to be sacked? You've got me freaking out now. Probably. All good. I might be There's here tomorrow. There's someone at the door, actually, that's waiting to escort you out the building. I'll tell you who won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sacked. That's the twist. I'm True gone. fact. Mandy D won't be here tomorrow. Um, so but we- I will be back. For Monday and Monday we've our got a grand really, finale. Yeah, so our grand finale is going to be we're going to be joined by lots of celebrity guests um, who are going to be giving out awards for our housemates, and so we'll be able to look back at the series, our favourite moments, and also you know react to the final result. Yeah, and we'll by then know, we'll know. We'll know. We'll, we'll exactly. absolutely know. I mean, we'll know the Ek and Sue drama if that's all. Maybe I that's don't think all. We'll ever know. <laughs> 
It can't be one of those life mysteries. I need to know. I need to know where she is. There'll be a true crime, cold case, <laughs> Louis Theroux where dive. Is she? Yeah. Yeah, I know. She was there asking, where's Kate? Now we know where Kate is, but we don't know where Ekin is. Mm-hmm. So, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, see you tomorrow, and I'll see you next week. See you tomorrow. <laughs> see you next week. I'd have to get both of your phone numbers on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Then Con- I can send you voice notes. No, just contact details. Do you have WhatsApp? Yeah, of course. Yeah, then I can send you voice notes. No, it's okay. Just send me a note. <laughs>